Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Electronic Circuits, lecture number nine, uh, extra part three. So today we are going to discuss about a very important concept of a Miller theorem or Miller effect. So let's start. So what is this Miller theorem? Uh, let's say that we have an amplifier with a gain A V. Uh, obviously we have an input and an output, and a capacitor, a feedback capacitor, is connecting input and output, right? And while solving, this will become quite difficult. So we'll apply the Miller theorem, and we can decompose this capacitor into two parts. So what does the Miller theorem says that if a capacitor uh, C F is connected between the input and output terminals of an amplifier with a gain A V, then that capacitor C F can be split into two parts, into C M I at the input terminals and C M O at the output terminals. Correct and uh, Here the value, the 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 expression of CMO is as follows. So CMI, sorry for that. CMI will be given by we will be proving this point. CF into. Let me turn off the uh, ink to save. So it will be CF into one minus AV. So that's the formula for CMO. Uh, CMI, CMI is called as Miller input capacitance, and CMO is called as Miller output capacitance. So CMO will be given by the feedback capacitor CF into one minus one upon AV. So that will be the formula for output Miller capacitance. Now we will discuss about in next ten minutes or five minutes. We will be deriving how we have achieved this result. Okay, so first, first we'll concentrate on CMI, and then we'll see CMO derivation. So let's start. Uh, before starting, there are some conditions for this Miller theorem to work. So what are the conditions? We'll write them down. The conditions are the amplifier should be an inverting amplifier. Okay, the conditions are the amplifier. Should be inverting. So I'll write down the condition over here. Okay. So let me take it up. So number one condition is inverting amplifier. That means the gain of such an amplifier will be negative. Okay. That implies that the gain. Voltage gain of the amplifier, AV gain AV, is negative. Gain being negative means the input and output are out of phase by 180 degree. So these are the conditions under which you can apply the Miller theorem. Okay. Again, I repeat, Miller theorem. If there is a capacitor connected between the input and the output terminals, that can be split into two parts. One in the in in the form of in input Miller capacitance. And one in the form of out, uh, Miller output capacitor, right? So let's see the effect of uh, feedback capacitor C F on the input. So let's start with the first derivation. Okay. So let me begin now. Let me clear the yeah. So let me start. So we'll write over here effect of feedback capacitor C F on the input. Okay, so let's begin now with our analysis. Fine. So let me draw the circuit again. I'll consider a amplifier with a gain A V. So I have my input port over here, which is, and this is the output. So we are concentrating on the input side. Here we have V out, and then we have a feedback capacitor connecting the two. So here is my feedback capacitor C F, which is connecting the input with the output. Okay, this is my capacitor C F. So let's start and apply the this thing analysis. So this is the this is ground for the amplifier. Let's say. So the gain of the amplifier will be V out upon V in. So this is the V in. 
over here plus minus v in and uh, let's say that this node over here is called as a uh, node x let's say that this node is x and let's define some currents now the current flowing over here let's consider the input current to the amplifier is ai right and here the current flowing into the amplifier network will be let's say i1 and current flowing into the feedback capacitor let's consider to be i2 okay so we'll consider three currents i i which is current flowing into the uh, from the source input right then we have i1 this current is split into two parts i2 which is going through the capacitor and i1 which is going inside the amplifier right now uh, let's start analyzing so over here will first step is to apply the kcl apply kcl at node x so what will what will be the result over here the kcl says that incoming current and outgoing current should be same so that means over here we can write i i will be equal to i1 plus i2 okay i i is equal to i1 plus i2 so what can we write next step now what is i i i i will be v in will be v in upon z i so what will be z i z i will be the input impedance of the entire circuit let's say input impedance of the entire circuit and there will be one more impedance r i the impedance looking into the amplifier so z i is the overall out, uh, input impedance of the circuit and r i is the input impedance of my amplifier so let's just consider that uh, you know i i will uh, the current which is flowing into the circuit correct so i i will be given by v i or v in divided by z i okay and then we have i1 so i1 will can be written as uh, v1 i mean uh, uh, sorry v i input again v in divided by r i okay again it can be written as v in divided by r i so voltage upon impedance or resistance is the current right and what will be i2 i2 can be written as v in minus v out upon xcf okay so i can write it as i1 i2 as v in minus v out upon xcf impedance offered by the uh, feedback capacitor and uh, we know for a fact that uh, v out is related to v in as v out is equal to av times v in this is the this is what we want right the output voltage should be an amplified format of the input so we'll use this result in our next analysis okay so next is we'll substitute it we'll solve it further we can write v in upon z i is equal to v in upon r i plus instead of v out we can write av into v in so we can write over here v in into 1 minus av divided by x cf so basically we are proving the uh, miller theorem over here right now next step is that we will divide throughout by divide throughout by v i v in basically right so next step is uh, divide by v in divide numerator and denominator throughout by v in so what do we get over here we will get that is 1 upon z i is equal to 1 upon r i plus 1 upon we can write x c f and uh, here we can divide we can take this 1 upon 1 minus a v down below here so we can get like this okay it means the same only only thing is i have taken this uh, one divided by that so this means it will be at the top only right but we are writing in this form fine so next we can write it as that is 1 upon z i is equal to 1 upon r i plus 1 divided by x c m right 
XCMI we can write it as. Okay. So this we call it equation number. This we call it equation number one. Fine. So here what is XCMI? Let me rewrite XCMI now. So over here we have written XCMI will be equal to XCF divided by one minus AV. Okay, so it is as if uh, you know uh, we are representing in the form of a equivalent circuit. So how will the equivalent circuit look like? It is as if that the entire circuit which we have seen earlier will look something like this. Let me use a green color to represent in the box form. Okay, fine, and then I'll use this color. So here it is. This is my RI, and this is my CMI. Okay, and this is my V in, and that is ZI. We can apply. We can see over here. This is ZI. So we need to solve this further. So now. I can write uh, X C M I. I mean, I, I can write impedance formula is what X C can be written as one upon two pi into F into C, right? So I will expand this further now. Let me use a blue color. Yeah. So I can write that is so X C M I can be written as one upon two pi F into C M I. Is equal to how can how can we write x c f? It can be written as one upon two pi f into c f, and that will be multiplied by one minus a v. Okay, so if I compare right hand side and left hand side, I have two pi f common. So I can from here what can I conclude? I can easily conclude that over here your c m i will be equal to Sorry for that. C M I will be equal to C F times one minus A V, and that is what we were looking for, right? Where C M I is nothing but my input Miller capacitance. So as you can see over here, right? So this R I and X C M I, that is the impedance offered uh, by the capacitance, are uh, they are in parallel, and then we have Z I, which is in uh, you know uh, that Z I will be equal to the parallel combination of R I and C M I. That is what equation number one tells us. So this is equation number two, which will directly give us the value of C M I. So let me put it inside the box. So that is what is input Miller capacitance derivation. Okay. So the effect. Uh, so we can write over here that uh, the effect of the feedback capacitance on the input is that. uh when it decomposes into the input side it multiplies itself with 1 minus av okay where av the gain av is negative so basically your input capacitance uh, in input miller capacitance enhances the value of feedback capacitance okay fine so this is equation number 2 so far so good so what we have done so far is that uh let's say where we have an amplifier amplifier with a gain av Okay, and we have the input side and the output. These are the two ports, input and output port. This is V out, and this is V in. We have a feedback capacitor in the form of C F. So what we have done so far is that this feedback capacitor is converted into input Miller capacitance. This is A V. Now we have this input port again. We have output port. We have just analyzed the effect of C F on the input. Okay, so what is the effect? This is V in. So here we have this capacitor. This is my C M I. Okay, and then C M I value we have found out to be equal to one uh, minus A V times. C F. That is what we have derived in equation number two, right? So next we will see the effect of feedback capacitor on the output side. So that is the next part. So let's do that. We'll do that over here. 
Okay, next is second one. Okay, let me start over here. Let me use a black color. Okay, so let me take it this side. So now we will study the effect of effect of CF, which is the feedback capacitor on output side. On the output side. So let's begin with the analysis now. So first of all, we'll draw an amplifier with a gain AV. So let me draw that quickly. Now we are concentrating on the output side. So this is my amplifier with gain AV. That's my input side, input port. So we have V in applied over here, and then we have output side. Here it is plus minus V out, and then we have the uh, feedback capacitor, which is denoted by C F. So this is C F. Now we have to analyze this circuit now. So for that we will consider the ground connection over here for the amplifier. Then also we'll consider that this is the output impedance of the amplifier. And uh, let me call this terminal as Y over here. This is Y, and uh, the current flowing, the current flowing into the circuit. Let's consider that uh, the output current which is flowing inside is denoted by. Okay, let me use a green color. So this is I O. The current flowing into the capacitor. Let's consider it to be I two. And the current flowing back to the amplifier is denoted as I one. Clear about it? So I O is split into two parts in the form of I one and I two. So that is what we have analyzed so far. So let's begin now with the analysis further. Okay. So first we will start by applying the KCL at node Y. So let's start. Apply KCL at node. Why? So what do we get by applying KCL to node Y? Uh, incoming current I not is equal to I one plus I two. So we can easily write over here I not is equal to I one plus I two, right? So here we can write that is. So we can write I O is equal to what is I one? Uh, basically I one will be V out divided by R O because R O is the output impedance of the amplifier. So let me take it up over here. So I O can be written as I one can be written as V out upon R O, and I two can be written as how can we write I two? So I two will be V out minus V in divided by X C F. Okay, I two is V out minus V in divided by X C F. So let me write that over here. It is V out minus V in divided by X C F. So that is what we have. That that is what we have, right? So now let's start. Let's continue further. Normally, what happens is the output impedance value is uh, very very uh, you know small, right? So uh, output impedance is uh, usually considered to be very very small. So one upon small value will be pretty large, okay? So it's uh, significant. I mean, uh, sorry, yeah, RO it's pretty large for an amplifier. Let's say it's it's open circuit, right? So its value is very very high. So RO is usually very large. RO is usually large. So we can consider that V out upon RO is extremely small. It's tending towards It's tending towards zero. So what we can do is now we can rewrite the above expression as follows. That is, I not is equal to I not is approximately equal to V out minus V in upon X C F. And we know what is uh, you know we can write V in in terms of V out. So what is the relation between them? Uh, we know that A V will be given by V out upon V in. So how can we replace uh, 
now v in we can we write v in terms v in in terms of something else yeah so we can write v in is equal to uh, v out upon av so that is what exactly we will substitute it over here so in the next step we can write that is i o is approximately equal to v out minus v out upon av divided by x c f okay so from here in the next step we can take v out common on the right hand side and then we can further write this formula as follows so it will be i not is approximately equal to uh, 1 minus 1 upon av into v out okay divided by x c f okay this much is clear to you all okay so let's proceed ahead so now we can write it as in the form we can take v out over here on the left on the right left hand side so we have i out i out or i o divided by v out is approximately equal to 1 minus 1 upon av divided by xcf okay so if i out upon v out is this much what is v out upon i out so we can write now v out upon i not is approximately equal to xcf divided by 1 minus 1 upon av so that is uh, how we have fared so far right so next is that uh, we can write it for follow up on that so xcf can be written as xc can be written as 1 upon 2 pi f into c so we can further elaborate this as 1 divided by 2 pi f uh 2 pi f into 1 minus 1 upon av into cf okay into cf so uh what we can do now further is that uh we can compare this uh, xcf let me write it over here so this value over here which we see 1 upon 2 pi f into 1 minus 1 upon av into c f okay this value is nothing but my uh, c m o okay so basically this we can add it as uh, this we can add it as xcf xcf into 1 minus 1 upon av is equal to xcmo okay i'll prove this point shortly now right see uh, i i i I'll, i'll get back to this now so xcf into 1 minus 1 upon av is approximately equal to xcmo so let's prove it prove this point now so next we can write let me use a blue color uh this we can write it as 1 upon 2 pi f into 1 minus 1 upon av into cf is equal to 1 upon 2 pi f into uh c m o so here we can cancel out xcf uh, 2 pi f 2 pi f and we can write over here that uh c m o the output miller capacitance will be given by cf times 1 minus 1 upon av okay and that is what we are expecting from the output miller capacitance and this equation we can call it as equation number i think 4 or 3 uh, we have we given any equation number over here no so we can call this equation number 3 okay 
so now uh, how did we get this step let 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 go back to earlier steps now over here right so here what we have written is that xcf xcf divided by 1 minus 1 upon av so that we have written is approximately as 1 upon 2 pi f into 1 minus uh, 1 minus 1 upon av into cf right so this 2 pi f into 1 minus av Well, I mean, one minus one upon A V into C F is nothing but my X C M O. This is nothing but my this much over here. Sorry for that. Here it is. Okay. So this is X C M. O, right. So that we have equated to X C F into one minus uh, one upon A V. That will be equal to X C M O, right. And that's why we have further analyzed it. And finally, we got C M O is equal to output Miller capacitance is equal to C F times one minus one upon A V, where C M O is nothing but my output Miller capacitance. So the effect of uh, C V on the output side is that. It's multiplied with uh, that that factor C F, the feedback capacitor, and into one minus one upon E V. If the gain of the amplifier is very large, then the output Miller capacitance is approximately equal to C F only. So we can write further over here that uh, if E V is very much greater than one, then we can say that C M O is approximately equal to C M. Uh, feedback capacitor itself so that's also an important observation to note down okay yeah so any more doubts over here correct so from this results which we have seen over here from equation number 2 that is cmi and equation number 3 that is cmo so we can write now we can conclude this now further so let me add this part over here again okay let me take this and i have to add this part in the uh, cmo also derivation here it is so here if i add it i have to have an effect of uh, yeah so what's the effect of feedback capacitor on the output miller capacitance now we have a capacitance cmo and cmo will be given by um 1 up 1 minus 1 upon av into cf okay here we can write over here plus minus v out so that is the uh, miller theorem okay now from 2 and 3 we can say that uh, okay we can say that very easily from this equation and this equation if my if i consider an inverting amplifier so let's say that i have an inverting amplifier now inverting amplifier which we are studying over here will be common emitter amplifier let me write an example over here so we can have common emitter amplifier bjt amplifier and also we have common source amplifier mosfet amplifier so we can have common source mosfet amplifier so we have an inverting amplifier and for an inverting amplifier the gain is comparatively greater than 1 so what can we conclude over here that uh, cmi is very much greater compared to cf because the gain is negative so let's say that uh, av value is 100 so 1 minus minus of 100 so 101 times cf so definitely my input miller capacitance is much much higher than the feedback capacitance and also your cmo let me consider this yeah cmo is approximately equal to cf if my gain value is very much larger compared to 1 because it will be 1 divided by 1 upon gain so whatever the value of if the gain av is large then we can consider that cmo will be approximately equal to cf so what is the miller effect 
the 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 in this what is miller effect the input miller capacitance increases over here due to miller effect therefore we can say that let me write a statement over here miller effect so what does the miller effect tells you that let me add it in black only so uh, your increase in the capacitance increase in the capacitance so this increase in the capacitance will be cmi increase in the capacitance at the input at the input is called miller effect okay so uh, due to this miller effect when we have whenever we have a feedback okay let me just bring it up when we have a feedback capacitor connecting input and output and when we wish to apply a miller effect the input miller effect capacitance is increased to several times multiplied by the gain whereas the output miller capacitance remains the same as your feedback capacitance value only here it is written very very clearly so the increase in the capacitance at the input side is called as miller effect okay so i think we have completed our topic for today we have discussed uh, miller theorem first what was the concept and then we have derived the formulas for cmi and cmo and we have seen what is miller effect that is increase in the capacitance at the input side is indeed the miller effect because cmi is basically uh, very much higher as compared to cf feedback capacitor value whereas cmo is approximately equal to the feedback capacitor value if the gain of the inverting amplifier is very much greater than 1 okay so that is all overall in a gist this miller concept uh, miller effect will be helpful while solving the uh, you know while analyzing the high frequency response of an amplifier of a bjt amplifier and a mosfet amplifier so that is all for this lecture next time we'll directly start with the high frequency response of a bjt amplifier so until then have a good day and thank you